thank you for you know joining the video series this is the first in a sequence hopefully we'll have more uh, coming along um uh, let me present hong ming and melvin melvin's going to talk about uh, robust optimization a lot of uh, work going on there hong ming you can basically be the representative to to our audience try to basically yeah. tease out some interesting ideas from melvin please yeah. take it away a fourth year phd student at iowa right uh, so i think the purpose of okay so i think i just want to ask melvin first like, like mm. so melvin you know, you are the like at the pinnacle of uh, robust optimization you are the expert of the experts <laughs> of robust optimization so but i think the question is like uh what is why robust optimization okay, as a as a start right what, what what's so good about robust optimization for someone who's never heard of robust optimization why would we be interested to use robust optimization right, mm -hmm. compared to other methods Okay. Um, first, I'd like to thank Raji for setting this thing uh, up, right, and also Homing for uh, for posing the question for me. Or uh, yeah, uh, I been known in this area for quite a while. Uh, I started working in uh, robust optimization about more than twenty years ago when I was a PhD student at uh, MIT, and Dimitri Batsmas, who is my advisor at that time, uh give me two problems to work on, right? One is robust optimization, and the other one was uh, uh, approximate DP. And at that time, I was a lazy student in the sense that I do not want to do a lot of literature review and realized that in robust optimization, there was only a few papers, right? The right. paper by uh, Nemrowski, Penta and Nemrowski, and also by Al Gawi, right, in this era. So there's only a few papers to read. But as I explore it, I can't understand that uh, the intricacy of modeling in the sense that in real world optimization problem, right? A deterministic model like you learn in LP mm -hmm. may not necessarily apply because the issues of uncertainty, right? Then I start to know more in the sense that when problems mm -hmm. with uncertainty, it becomes harder to solve. In fact, it's harder to model as well. Mm -hmm. First learn about robust optimization where they characterize uncertainty in a very simple model, right? A model that doesn't have distribution, but an uncertainty set. He likes it a lot for the reason that there is nice tractable properties. Part of the reason why he was fascinated in uh, robust optimization is because in a lot of application he was doing, right? It needs to deal with large scale optimization models. And a lot of practical models becomes much harder to solve right, when there is a uh, stochastic framework. So what does stochastic framework at that time? So when, when we characterize uncertainty, um, we would use, when we learn uncertainty, right, the thing that we learned in operation research is characterize uncertainty as a random variable. Yeah. So like the random variable that you know is like normal distribution, uh, Poisson distribution and so forth. But in the real world, right, in the problems, there are tons of many uncertainty that comes to that. There is no name to do all those uncertainty. It doesn't come that this is a random variable that has points on it so far, mm -hmm. right? So in a very practical setting, right, fitting it over with uh, characterized uncertainty using distribution is mathematically elegant. But when you need to find solve solution, right, there is there's difficulty because it be, there's a heavy burden on computation. Mm -hmm. Right. So at that time we will look at maybe let's just try to use computation as a uh, as a justification for me because in the end I want to get a solution that can address uncertainty in some way or another. Right. Stochastic optimization is one way to look at issues of uncertainty, but that's not the other way, uh, only way. Let's open up. So let's simplify the uncertainty. Let's, let's trip away a distribution function. Let's just look at the support, mm. right? And try to assume that people are ambiguity averse, right? Ambiguity averse in the sense that among all possible solutions, you choose the worst one. Yes. It turns out this has some tractable properties, right? And uh, the my PhD work in that time were to 
at that time there were few papers so let me say i was one very fortunate to just look at linear programming right i won i like linear programming because that, that was the first course i learned at mit and want to to come up with a framework that is also linear so it doesn't destroy the complexity mm -hmm. and linear programming is ubiquitous if you can be modern and linear programming the chance of people using it is higher yeah. so the price of robustness my first paper in that area emerges and right. it was a very simple paper, but it is quite impactful, right? You gave a very good answer. Uh, so, I, so I think just a summary is like robust optimization allows us to have tractable solutions, right? To uh, mm. difficult, uh, non-deterministic problems, right? So right. we're solving for the worst case problem. But, but I think there is one criticism of a robust mm. optimization is mm. that uh, since you're solving for the worst case, right? right your, your solution is not necessarily the best. Right, mm. then when you apply it in uh, practice, you're just hoping that somehow your solution mm. actually works really mm. well, right? or, or well in general. Right? So, mm. you, what, what, what are your thoughts on, on that? Right? Mm. that is so, th this is a very interesting it's a question of frame. All mm. right, if you are framed to believe that stochastic programming is the right model, right, in a sense that demand has to be a particular distributed with known parameters, mm -hmm. right? Then under that framing, I will agree with you that it's not the best, mm -hmm. all right? But if you want to focus on solving real life problems, right? We have to be careful. I would say, I would argue that robust optimization is indeed conservative in the following sense. It's not necessarily realistic. The classical robust optimization assumes uncertainty set, right? To me, the right model to go for is to look at data. The problem with data-driven optimization is that the distribution, the future distribution will almost surely not be the same as uh, uh, the historical distribution. Yeah. Right. So what are you optimizing? You are trying to find the best solution, right, given that the distribution is the empirical distribution. Okay. Now in data-driven optimization, I don't have the benefit of knowing the underlying data generated model. Statistical estimation, John, uh, is it George Fox said, uh, there's a famous say, saying, all models are wrong, wrong. All statistical models are wrong, some are useful. Mm -hmm. So what happened if you just try to use the empirical distribution or just a stochastic programming model to solve it? The problem is that it could overfit to a wrong distribution that not that may not be reflective of the future, mm. right? There is this is actually called the optimizer curse. So to some extent, the problem with people characterizing robust optimization being conservative is not correct because the fact is that we do not know the distribution, right? You cannot you cannot base your preference on something that you do not know how to solve, mm. right? If that can be done. Granted, I agree with you. If you know the right distribution and so forth, I granted you that robust optimization is conservative, right? But you're comparing with something that you don't even know. Right. What a right reference will be comparing with someone that does empirical optimization, optimizing over a wrong distribution, mm -hmm. right? Yes. What you get is that you tend to get so solution that is, it is uh, too optimistic. You prepare for the best, right? You know, both of us were soldiers before. There's an army saying that we prepare for the, we, we prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Yeah. Robust optimization is in that sense, right? We prepare for the worst, hoping for the best, right? In empirical optimization, we prepare for the best. It turns out that when, when uncertainty comes out, you are worse off. Right. Take for example, in the case of pandemic, there will be application where, in this case, right, robust optimization of it. Right. We do not know how the, the how is going to be spread and so forth. And any things, any disparity, right, any predict wrong prediction, right, can extra can actually lead to dire situation. Right. Something preparing for the worst could be a good option. It depends on the application. Right. Oh, okay. That's. I think that's very uh, insightful answer. Actually. Uh, yeah. Um. I think. Okay. So. So. Uh. Maybe. Maybe. We, I. Let me talk about one of your papers. So recently, Melvin, you have a paper. 
the name is really interesting to me. It's called the mm-hmm. Tower of Robustness. <laughs> right. So uh, maybe could you explain a little bit about the paper and like why do you call the Tower of Robustness? Because to me, the Tower of Robustness is like it's a very uh, strong title, you know, like the way of robustness, right? Right, right. Yeah, so yeah, right. I've been working on robust software for many years. And I think this is probably one of the people that really inspired a uh, way to look at robust optimization. In fact, this is uh, is, uh, is definitely the uh, 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 paper which I like a lot, right? I call it the Tao, there are two reasons. Uh, one of it is to bring in this idea of uh, not succumbing to, not restricting nature, Right, so the robust optimization in the past were to come up with a small uncertainty set, right? Mm-hmm. So we can't restrict nature to this uncertainty set, and uh, that to me is not the right way of looking at robust optimization, right? It should be allowing nature to even violate the constraint, right? But the constraint is mitigated by putting some form of norms around the penalty function or penalty function so that. Uh, it allows some form of violation, right? Provided the the deviation of the uncertainty is not too far away from that norm, right? So it's just, it's a more uh, uh, softer way of looking at robust optimization. Robust, this represents an alternative to classical robust optimization, and we're explaining a lot on the computation. The comp- we assume that the computation is very similar to robust optimization. What is more important is that the parameters that we choose as input to robustness optimization model is the target, right? Mm-hmm. And we can show the solutions is indeed better than classical robust optimization, right? For the same computational efficiency, right? You get better of solution. So I use the word Tao because it's a Chinese search for the way, or yeah. the path. To yeah. me that, in my opinion, I'm more convinced that this is the way that we look at robust optimization. Right. Uh, so I think we are really, really looking forward to that work. Then. This should be mm. a very seminal piece of paper. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, See you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for me. Yeah, no worries. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.